We're live. Here we go. We are now uh, rolling through 8.5, and we're going to be doing example number one. And so let me just do some precursor work before we actually start the example. And so here were two or three binomials that Mr. Nzunza talked about, and um, he talked about the different properties of uh, a binomial, of how like they have one more term than this, and they talked about how the sum of the degrees or the powers are always equal to that. But uh, so now what I want to focus in on is how do we get the coefficients? Okay, how do I get, for example, something like this? Say if I wanted to know, okay, well, how did you know that that was a three? Okay, and uh, so what I want to do is let's go through the exercise of doing that, and then I'll formally define the binomial theorem. Because if I show you the binomial theorem now, you're going to be like, oh, okay, the binomial theorem is like pretty hairy. So let me just show you how we get this coefficient and get that coefficient. And basically, when you get coefficients, that's what the binomial theorem is. So I'm going to go ahead and do this work over here. Okay. And so th this is how this works here. What we do is that if you want to find a particular coefficient in an expanded form, we're going to put these big parentheses right here. Okay. And then what we do is that the number that is going to be on top is going to be n, and this row is going to be r. Okay, now let me go through what does r and n mean. Okay, the n is always your exponent. Squeaky, squeaky. Okay, and our r is our term, term number. However, I'm just going to make a little side note. It starts at zero, though. Okay, I'm just going to put that right there. Um, it starts start at zero, and you'll find out right now why, okay? So the way that you say this is you say n choose r. That's how you say this. So if you don't say uh, parenthesis n with the r. Uh, no, no, you say n choose r, okay? So if we're going to find this, we're going to use this formula right here, which is, um, it's really a combination. It's really kind of like what the general formula is, but we're going to say this is n choose r. And the way that this works is this, okay? If I look at the theorem here, What's my exponent? Well, if I come over here, my exponent is 3, right? So my n is going to be 3, okay? It's going to be 3. And then uh, what is going to be my r? Well, again, I said that we start at 0. So this term right here is term 0, and then this is term 1. So we're going to do 3 choose 1, okay? So that's the first start of it. But now the question is, well, wh what do we do with this? Like, how do we do 3 choose 1? And um, let me show you how we do that here, and maybe I should have defined that before, but what this means is this. This is how you do n choose r. You take the first number n, this is our very first thing that we probably must learn in this class. We're going to do n factorial, okay, that's not an exclamation point, that's called factorial. And then we're going to take the difference, n minus r, subtract those two, factorial times r factorial. Okay? So that's how you do this. You do n factorial over the difference of n of r factorial times r factorial. So let's actually try that then over here. Okay? 3 factorial. Let's recall 3 factorial means that you start with this value 3 and you keep going until you get to 1, making the product. So 3 times 2 times 1. Okay? So that's, that's my 3 factorial. 3 factorial right there. And maybe I can write it in that form. That may be a little more appropriate first. I'm going to go ahead and write 3 factorial. Okay? And then we're going to do n minus r. So n minus r. 3 minus 1 factorial. And then we have to do our r factorial. So 1 factorial. Okay, so now let's actually go ahead and expand that out. Okay, so 3 factorial means 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, so that's what that is. 2 minus 1 factorial. Well, 2 factorial is just 2 minus, or 2 times 1. So this is 2 minus 1, which is 2. So 2 factorial is 2 times 1. Okay? And this is times 1 factorial, which is just 1 itself. So if we notice here, we have some things that are going to cross out. Cha-cha-cha. And 3 divided by 1 is 3. If you're thinking, dude, you got to be kidding me. You did all that work just to get that 3? That's right. Uh, 
Mr. Nzunza and I will teach you how to get this value very quickly on your calculator. Okay, so that will come later on. Don't try to creep right now. So, but this is how you get this by hand. Um, so uh, maybe uh, what we can do, let's go ahead and do one more maybe, and then we'll actually go on to example number one. Let's go ahead and try, how would we get maybe like this uh, six right here? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go, and uh, so if we want to find this particular coefficient, we're going to do one of our combinations here. And uh, what's going to be our n? Let's go right here, four, right? So I'm going to put four as my n, and my r again is my term number. What number, term number is it? Starting at zero. Zero, one, two. So two right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and expand that out. So that means four factorial over four minus two factorial times two factorial. All that stuff there to uh, cancel out and to simplify. So four factorial is four times three times two times one. Four minus two is two, which is two times one, right? Four minus two is two factorial, and then another two factorial. So these guys right here, two and one, cancel out. Okay, and can't the two go into four? Right, I'm not going to go right there. Two goes into four two times, so we're left with this two times three, which is six, and that's how we got that six right here. Okay, so basically what we've just done right now is the first part of the binomial theorem. And let me officially define it right now for you. Okay, the binomial theorem gives us the expansion of all these guys over here. That's what it does. It expands it. So I would use the binomial theorem to expand this. Okay, you don't want to do this by hand. How many of you want to take this and do this? x plus 4 times x plus 4 times x plus 4 times x plus 4. Do you want to go ahead and do that right now? I mean, you can. You're going to get this, and it's going to take you a good five, six, seven minutes. Okay? So, uh, what I'm telling you is that we don't do this by hand. We're going to use the binomial theorem to expand here. So, this is what it is. Okay? Given that we have some binomial, x plus y to the power of n, this is the binomial theorem. It's the sum from r again starts at zero, right? The sum from zero all the way up to our number of um, exponent terms that, uh, that there are. Ah, doesn't this look familiar right here? This right here, look, this right here is just our n choose r, right? That's what that is. This is our n choose r, which that's what we, what we were just doing. And then this part gives us our exponent. So that, that's what gives us these. And uh, Mr. Nzuz is going to talk more about that when he does that example, um, which, which that means we'll put it all together. So this is the official definition of, of binomial theorem. All I've taught you right now is just how do you get and choose R? How do you get the coefficients? I haven't talked about how do you get all these guys over here. So, okay, that's some pre-work. Let's actually now do example number one. Oh, this video's long. I gotta watch Friends. I gotta watch. You. Uh, you gotta turn off the TV. Come on, let's get rolling here. So we're gonna go ahead and do these guys here, starting with example one. Uh, and this right here is a different notation than what you're used to. Check this out, guys. This is the same thing as saying eight choose two. Okay, so this C right here really means combination, but we also can re replace that with choose. So if you see it like this, it means that. As an IB student. They, they won't use this notation. Um, IB will use this. Um, however, it's still mathematically correct to, to write this. And uh, our textbook will write it both ways. So just know it as your math knowledge. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. And I'm going to do this rather quickly. And like, you can check your, your work. So I'm going to go ahead and do 8 factorial. Right? 8 minus 2, right? Because that has to be my n minus r. 8 minus 2 is 6 factorial over... 2 factorial, okay? Now, I don't know if you guys noticed something real quick here, because I'm going to show you something that then we can actually do this quicker, okay? Notice that 8 factorial is 8 times 7 times 6 factorial, right? It goes 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I'm going to stop at 6 factorial, because look. Look, look at what's at the bottom here. 
two or six factorial. Can I just cross those out? Those can cross out right there. So I save myself a lot of work by writing them all out. Those can cross out right there, and then I still have my two times one because that's what uh, two factorial is. So as you can see, we can actually simplify it a lot quicker by doing that. Uh, two goes into eight uh, four times, and so that means we get uh, 28. So this answer right here would be 28. Okay, and we'll do this one right here quickly again. Uh, 10 factorial over 10 minus 3. Um, so 7 factorial over 3 factorial. Okay, and I know that these are going to cross out, so I'm going to say 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial over 7 factorial times 3 factorial. Okay, if we're going a little quickly here, you can pause the video and rewind it. Okay, those go out right there. And 3 factorial is the same thing as 3 times 2 times 1. Yes, you can put this in your calculator, but I would like to do these by hand. Uh, 3 can go into 9 3 times. Uh, 2 can go into 10 uh, 5 times. I could have also done 2 into 8, right? I mean, we're going to get the same thing right here. And uh, so right now we're going to get to 15 and then times that by um, 8. So 40. So 120. So 120 right there. So good then. And then, uh, good, so let's go ahead and do these last two examples right here. Uh, 7 two, 0, 7 factorial over 7 minus 0, so that's 7 factorial over 0 factorial. Okay, well, don't those just cross out right there? Okay, and um, we learned way back in uh, 8.1 or 8.2 that 0 factorial is 1. And this is one of those little rules. Okay, so 0 factorial equals 1. You need to know that right there. So that would be uh, 1 over 1, which would just be 1 right here, okay? So that's the answer for this guy. And lastly, 8 choose 8. 8 factorial over 8 minus 8, which is 0 factorial over 8 factorial. Okay? Uh, th 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 let's cross out again. And then obviously that's just going to be 1. So 1 over 1 equals 1 right there. So just good practice on knowing how to use our choosing our numbers here for our coefficients.